Located in a thick woodland area on the outskirts of Oshobo lies the Oshun Sacred Grove, which is one of the last remnants of the primary high forests in southern Nigeria. The one path that cuts right through the grove is lined on either side with sanctuaries and sacred places that illustrate the pantheon of deities associated with the Yoruba traditional religion. Despite the proximity of the forest to human habitation, the grove has remained protected for years, owing to a belief system which prevents any form of encroachment from taking place, regarded as sacrilegious or offensive to the deities. The integrity of the site, which has remained largely untampered with since the founding of Ushobo Kingdom, is what informed UNESCO's decision to inscribe it a World Heritage Site in 2005, thereby changing the status of the grove overnight. The new sacred art, which forms a constant theme around the forest, was created by the late Austrian artist and celebrated protector of the forest, Susan Wenger, who, together with some Nigerian artists, transformed the sacred grove into a sculptural garden filled with compelling artworks and objects of habitation. Further down the grove, an extension of the wall marks the sacred precinct of a legendary figure known as Yamakbo, with a tangled entrance that leads inwards into a cool forest glade. According to Yoruba oral tradition, Yamakbo was a woman of gigantic proportions who played a vital role in the defense of the town during times of war as her extraordinary height made it possible for her to see far into the distance, thereby enabling her to warn the indigents of imminent danger. Exaggerated limbs distended at odd angles occupy great portions of the forest in a bizarre representation of her great stature, with sizable chunks of her revealing signs of recent renovation work. What became of Yamapu? Uh, originally, the fabrics that were used to construct the, the structure and the sculpture, you know, were just local materials. And naturally, with time, there should be some form of uh, disintegration or collapse and so on and so forth. So, uh, the late Madame Susan Wenger, who designed and installed it, you know, taught the best way to erect that structure well, with what the materials that she used. But with time, with rain, with sunshine, and uh, you know, most of these materials are now falling apart. But we don't want you know, the materials to remain like that, so we have to consolidate again. Like an extension of the trees, another sculptural masterpiece stems from the ground and twists its way upwards into a maze of abstract forms. In a posture of humility and supplication, outstretched hands are lifted up in tribute to nature. Those are the structures that are packaged by late Madame Susa Wenger. I tell you that that woman was a great artist. And apart from that, was a great promoter of Yoruba culture and an addict of, you know, believing in nature. So that was what she packaged, you know, to make Ella, those structures that you saw.
shaded by a canopy of trees with a flight of stone steps leading downwards. The inner grove lies within a natural depression marking the exact spot where the first palace of the founder of Oshobu was located long before it was shifted to its present position in the heart of Oshobu where it stands today. This ancient palace with its ornate pillars and elegant designs has remained in its original state for decades except for the thatched roof which is constantly patched to forestall the depreciating effects of weather and time. A short walk away from the palace will take you to the Oshun River, which on a normal day looks just like any other river, except for the utter stillness that pervades the atmosphere around it, and the occasional carving in the mist of its waters, indicating sacredness. Believed to be the abode of the river goddess Oshun herself, this sanctuary in the woods becomes the focal point of attention for devotees and tourists every time the annual Osho Oshobu festival comes around. Without a ripple, the murky brown waters flow on a constantly eastward current through to other parts of the town, transforming into tributaries and larger rivers along the way all of which form an interconnecting link between the town of Oshobu and neighboring communities. The annual Osho Oshobo Festival, which takes place every month of August, is a living, thriving and evolving response to the cultures and traditions of the people. Up to two weeks before the actual festival begins, new life is infused into the town, as visitors from near and far begin to stream in for the pre-festival activities, thereby quickening the economic pulse of the town. The courtyard of the palace is made colourful with casual stalls where traditional items, attractively arranged, fetch handsome prices by this time of the year. With the passing on of the monarch, only weeks before the festival, preparations within the palace had a more intense feel this year, as members of the royal household could be seen adorning themselves ahead of the great event which would further afford them the opportunity to pay their respects to the late ruler, accompanied by the appropriate traditional fanfare. Far from what I've seen, um, what's been most creative have been the activities that are, have been occurring in the Obas Palace in terms of sort of the dances and the rituals and the chants that have been going on. Um, this is sort of the final day, the final days of the festival, so to speak. So I think it's just great to see how the festival sort of gets to its peak and then obviously will close. Yeah. And um, you know, as a photographer, you have an eye for beauty, don't you? Yes. Um, which aspects of this festival do you think? really really catches your fancy you know in the area of um, 
real African culture. Sure. I think the hairstyles of the women, the priestesses and Yorisha and all the women that are here, um, and sort of their garb, their attire is really fascinating. And I think it's something that you don't see as much of in Nigeria anymore. I think we're all moving towards the Western fashion and the Western hairstyles. And I think this really makes me think about how amazing it is. You know, growing up as a kid, you braiding your hair, putting beads in your hair and natural curls. I think that's the beauty in the festival for me. It's that people really adorn themselves with traditional garb, traditional hairstyles. And I think it's something that we should see more of in Nigeria. I just moved back. Um, so for me, after being away for 15 years, I think it's just amazing to come back and see the culture and how rich the culture is here. And I think that as Nigerians, we should try to do more of this, to show more of the world of what Nigeria has. Um, you know, there are a lot of new carnivals coming up, like Caribbean carnivals, but this is the root of those carnivals um, from the Caribbean. You know, they, those are the African slaves that went to the Caribbean and tried to carry on these cultures, and this is the source of the culture, so it's amazing to come back and see the culture at its roots. Unless you know about the Oshun Festival, there's not a lot of hype about the festival every year. You literally have to know that it's going on to visit the festival. Um, there's the hype among certain circles, maybe international circles, um, artists, photographers, and so on and so forth. Uh, but on the general populace, I, I think it needs a bit more publicizing and marketing. Yeah, and funding. Funding, 100%, please. The votary maid, otherwise known as Aruba, who leads the procession during this grand finale is required to be a virgin as high premium is placed on purity. Despite the gradual fading away of celebrated African cultural traditions, the Shoshobo Festival is one event that has not only stood the test of time, but also become a reference point as people from this part of the world have been able to hold on to what was originally bestowed on them by their forefathers as a mark of the bond that was reportedly established over six centuries ago between the river goddess and Oba Badewolu Laroye, the first monarch of the Oshobu kingdom. <laughs> Fringed by a crowd of worshippers, the riverside becomes transformed into a melting pot of prayers as the worshippers make fervent supplications into the water's murky depths. <laughs> 